Hey everybody, so I'd like to take a little bit of time and talk about safety. Um, well, we all know that it's important because, you know, our, our insurance uh, premiums are, are high enough and we certainly don't want to be filing a bunch of claims about some of our employees getting hurt. So, you know, I think the what we need to do is we have to make sure that we're uh, giving them the proper equipment and making sure that equipment's in, in, in safe uh, working condition. So what I like to do is uh, whenever we have any floor equipment or vacuum cleaners, whenever we're done using them and wrapping up the cord, I always like to check the cord for some cuts and any abrasions. Uh, also, uh, you know, during that time, I'm going to know if there's any uh, loose uh, nuts and bolts, you know, on the piece of equipment too. I just check it over. Um, also, um, you know, when we're stripping and waxing floors, we want to make sure that everybody has the proper footwear because, you, as you know, when you get on the you uh, lay down some uh, stripper on a floor, uh, after five minutes it's really slick and it's easy for somebody to slip and fall. So, you know, it's really good to have uh, the proper footwear. You know, now they've got the, the boots that have uh, uh, traction on them where you can actually put a, a black pad on the bottom of them. Uh, they work really well, uh, really well. I've used those before too. Uh, something else that we probably want to think about is when people are you know, traveling in company vehicles, uh, we should make sure that we always have a, uh, a first aid kit available, uh, you know, and in uh, all vehicles. So uh, I, we always do this for all vehicles and then every, uh, every account that we have in the janitor's closet, we always put a first aid kit. You know, uh, the thing is with uh, OSHA, OSHA, they require that you have, uh, that you have a first aid uh, kit available to people. Uh, but there's really no standard on it as to what goes in it. Um, in our uh, janitorial safety training program, uh, we kind of cover that. Uh, I believe it was on page 17. I'll scroll to that real quickly. Uh, 12, 13, okay. Um, here it is right here. So, you know, in the, in the safety here, it states that OSHA standard 1910.151B states that an employer must have adequate first aid supplies ready available uh, although specific first aid supplies are not listed in the standard. So you know that's uh, something to keep uh, keep in mind. So when we have our first aid kits uh, you know there is OSHA has no no uh, specific first aid supplies listed but, uh, you know, the other thing is that we put in here that uh, ANSI does. Uh, ANSI is the American National Standards Institute. So, you know, uh, basic workplace first aid kit should include, and I'm not going to read off the list, but it tells you exactly what should be in the kit. And generally, um, your, your kits that, uh, your first aid kits normally will have everything that you need in there. So uh, these will be adequate. But I say the key is that we have to have one in every company vehicle and we should have one in every account that we service uh, so they are ready available to everybody. Now the other thing that we got to think about is that, you know, heaven forbid if somebody gets hurt, you know, uh, over the years, you know, we've had uh, people get hurt to where uh, they've got cut on a dispenser um, and uh, slip fall lifting is another thing. You know, those are all common uh, safety issues that uh, cleaning companies deal with. Um, carpal tunnel is the other one, you know, for holding on to the vacuum and stuff. But in any case, whenever you have a, uh, an incident like that, I hope that everybody's aware that we have to fill out the, the OSHA, uh, form 300, you know, so this is our log of work related injury injuries and illnesses. So it's very important that we do that. We, we have to, we have to do that. Uh, it's a, it's a requirement. So. What we tell our, our, all of our employees is that no matter how small the injury, report it. Uh, you know, it might be just a little tiny cut, but if that cut gets infected, now you've you got a different issue to deal with. And if, we're not, if we haven't logged it or you haven't talked to your supervisor about it, well, then it never happened. Uh, and the thing is, is that, you know, some insurance companies may even deny, deny the claim if it ends up being to where a tiny little cut got infected and now you, it's a serious issue they might deny the claim. So that's why you have to make sure that you have everybody fill out the, uh, uh, the Form 300. 
Now this usually is a responsibility of a supervisor. That's who we have responsible for it. So if there is an accident, uh, the person or team member has to notify their supervisor. And uh, then we also ask them to go ahead and write a uh, description on exactly what had happened uh, and how they got hurt. Uh, then the, the supervisor will make note of it on here on, the, on the, the Form 300. Now the other thing that we have to do is um, we have to make sure that we also fill out our summary of work-related injuries and illnesses. This is our Form 300A. Now this one here, we have to fill this out and this has to be posted um, from uh, February 1st to April 30th of the year following the year covered by the, by the form. So it's very more important that, that we do this. So what we do is we just uh, post our form 300A. We, we just post it in the break room uh, to where everybody can see it. Uh, also, there are instructions on filling out these, uh, uh, you know, these, uh, these forms. So just read the instructions and you're going to know what you can and, and should not do uh, as far as information on the form. Uh, the nice thing about the OSHA forms is you can just go do a Google search, uh, you know, form 300, uh, three, four, uh, form 300 and form 300A, and you'll be able to download them. And they actually got, you know, uh, forms that you can auto f or, uh, fill in too. But I like to get just downloadable ones, and then, uh, then we can make copies. But anyway, those are some things to think about. Um, you know, the whole thing about the safety is to try to minimize the safety so our experience rating gets, uh, gets better and higher, uh, so we pay lower premiums. But, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're claiming an accident and having accidents, then you probably want to review your safety training program. And it is mandatory that you have a safety training program for, for every employee uh, annually, so make sure you're doing that. So when you're providing that training, make sure they have a sign-off sheet. So when they come to the training, they just go ahead and they sign off that they've attended and so on and so forth. And in fact, we give a certificate, a certificate of completion for everybody that's completed any of our trainings, uh, our, our employees. Uh, then we put, uh, we give one to them and we actually put a copy in our in their personnel folder. So for whatever reason, if, if we were to have a serious accident happen and OSHA were to be involved in it, uh, one of the first things they're going to do is they're going to ask you if has the person had safety training, and that's one way for us to prove that yes, you know we've uh, been providing safety training to all our employees and, and team. So, anyway, I uh, hope you find these uh, tips helpful, and uh, uh, you know I hope that you don't have any any accidents and you uh, aren't paying the, the high insurance premiums. But uh, uh, you know we do have we can do things to to minimize that and just train follow up. Make sure everybody's safe. So, well, we'll talk to you again. Thanks. Thanks for watching the video.